In section 3.5, we're going to be graphing square root and cube root functions. We're going to do a basic square root graph and a basic cube root graph, and you're going to try the same um, after the video's uh, done. So what we're going to do um, for part A is look at the graph of y equals 1 half the square root of x. Um, what we're going to do, at least to start this off, is create a table of values we can use to help us uh, figure out what this is going to look like. Now one of the things you have to realize, since it's a square root function, I have to be careful about what I can plug in for x. I can't square root negatives and get any real number outputs. So it doesn't make sense to plug in a negative 1 or negative 2 or anything like that. The lowest value we're allowed to plug in for x would be a 0. And so if we take 1 half of the square root of 0, we're just going to get 0. So when we graph this, and let's put a little uh, graph together here. So if we graph this, let's do a little better than that. Say that's our x-axis, and I'm going to put the y-axis, excuse me, that was the uh, y-axis rather, this is the x-axis. So if we were going to plot some points, uh, we're going to start at 0, 0. Let's use a different color here. Um, there we go. Let's see. If I plot a point right there, we're plotting 0, 0 to start. Um, I'm just going to kind of stick with this color. Uh, another good number to plug in for x would be 1. I want to pick something I can square root or, or a perfect square number. So if I do 1 half of the square root of 1, well, that's 1 half times 1 because the square root of 1 is 1. That's going to give me an output of a half. So if I plug in 1, I get a half. If, if this is, is 1, if we're counting by 1s, that's going to be right, right about there. Um, if we plug in 2, that's going to be kind of a tough one to calculate because the square root of 2 is irrational. It, it's not a nice value. So rather than doing that, the next kind of logical number to, to plug in that would be easy for us is 4 because that's a perfect square of 2. I do one half the square root of four. It's really just a half times two. If you do one half times the number two, you get an output of one. So if I go over one, two, three, four spots, I get an output of two. That is the coordinate right there. Now we could continue to plot more points, but the pattern would look something like this: we start at the origin and go upwards on a smooth curve. Um, over and to the right, and this thing gradually increases and increases if we go far enough to the right. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the domain and range for these things uh, tomorrow in class, but what I want to do now is move on to the cube root function that we have before us here. We're going to do the same thing and make a table for x and y, and I'm going to start by plugging in 0. If we do negative 3 times the cube root of 0, you have to realize the cube root of 0 is 0, and negative 3 times 0 will give us 0 as an output. So here, let's see if we can create a graph underneath here a little bit. So there's the y-axis, and here will be my x-axis. And if we plot 0, 0, we're just plotting a point right at the origin. Now, I'm going to plug in perfect cubes, and I know 1 is a perfect cube. So if we do negative 3 times the cube root of 1, that's really just negative 3 times 1, which gives me negative 3. So if I plot that coordinate 1, negative 1, 2, 3, I'm down here. Now I don't want to plug in 2 because I don't know what the cube root of 2 is. That's not, not a nice perfect cube. Um, the next perfect cube would be 8. So I'm going to plug in 8. I'm going to do negative 3 times the cube root of 8. Now the reason why I did that is the cube root of 8 is the number 2, because 2 to the third is 8. So I can change that into negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6. So when I plug in 8 for x, I get negative 6 out. So let's see if I can fit this on here. Hopefully I can. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh-oh, 8 came off the charts a little bit. I'm going to just kind of sneak it down here as if it were on the chart. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if I went all the way down, it's just off the, uh, the chart. Hopefully you can plot that, that 8, 6 on your paper. Now, 
Now, unlike a square root function, I am allowed to plug in negatives in a cube root because we can cube root negative numbers. For instance, if I plug in negative 1, I'm going to do negative 3 times the cube root of negative 1. The cube root of negative 1 is asking what to the third power is negative 1, and that is negative 1. So it's the same as negative 3 times negative 1, which is positive 3. So if we plug in a negative 1, we get out Un, excuse me, a positive 3. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3 and put a point right there. Now another good number to plug in that we can take the cube root of is negative 8. So I'm going to do negative 3 times the cube root of negative 8. Cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. And if I multiply negative 3 times negative 2, I get positive 6. Now this one I can fit in, but once again, it's going to be a little bit mixed up in my table here. Let's see if we can still plot it. I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and go up 6. So that would be up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That ends up way, way over there. So this function kind of looks like a very smooth reverse S or a very smooth soft Z kind of curve. So what I have to do is I'm going to start up here and try to connect the dots here. Oops, how do I get back? There you go. I'll try to connect the dots here and hit that coordinate in negative 1, positive 3. Hit the origin, or at least try. Came close there. Go through the origin hit that coordinate at 1, negative 3, and then remember there was a coordinate at 6, negative 8, and so forth it goes. So it's this kind of smooth, like, Z-shape curve. What I'd like you to try now is the following. See if you can graph for part A. Let's keep it simple. Let's do y equals 2 square root of x. Make a table of values, plot some points, and then for B, Let's just graph y equals the cubed root of x. Um, give it a shot, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.